And there you are feeling bad about yourself, feeling bad about your life because every time you go on social media, there's a new success story or there's a new announcement from different people. But it feels like it's everybody but me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. As you can see, my hair is pumpkin ginger. I felt like doing something different and yes, I could have changed my hair color with wigs, but I thought I wanted to dye my actual hair. So this is the color I was going for. So I'm gonna be rocking this for a little while, have some experiment with different styles, but keep the same color. So welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Have you missed me? And wait a second, I need to check something. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see my channel right now. Shout out to 600,000 subscribers! Shout out to over 600,000 subscribers. We did that. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. So much more content to come. I find when I take good breaks, I come back with good content. So that's what I've been doing. And thank you guys for being patient with me. And I'm excited for what's next. So today's video was inspired by Miss Debs. I actually saw her at the event yesterday. Today, and she said that I should talk about this topic and it was from a tweet so this video is inspired by a tweet and I thought I'd just delve into that a little bit more before I get into the video if you are looking to get healthy make sure you guys check out this ad so guys I'm really trying to clean up my diet and eat healthier instead of ordering takeouts all the time that's why Hills Hot and Savory Meals is one to try if you're busy like me and always on the go this one is for you all you need is a kettle or a microwave and you're good to go I love eating these meals at lunchtime as it only takes about five minutes to prepare and you have a hot meal in your belly just like that each meal contains everything you need in one serving all the carbs protein fiber and good fats your body needs plus all 26 essential vitamins and minerals which means you can get all of that in less time what i love about who's hot and savory pouches is that it has ingredients that you can trust like tomato garlic quinoa rice and coriander my favorite flavor is a sweet and sour and they taste delicious and always fill me up so click the link in my description box to try who's hot and savory today okay so the tweet in question was by a twitter user called ray king and she said i think the reason why i'm so disappointed in myself is because I created this perfect plan for my life, i.e. working my dream job, married at 24, buy a house, kids at 25, and live happily ever after. And not one of those things I can tick off my list at this current age of 27. And when I saw the tweet, I almost rolled my eyes. She's like, I didn't get it by 25, but I'm only 27, it's only two years. Meanwhile, we've been in a pandemic for two years. But anyway, I can relate because a few years ago, I actually made a video, actually, how long? probably five years ago now, I made a video talking about my quarter life crisis. I was getting in a crisis at 25 as well. I was like, shoot, oh my God, I'm gonna be 25. I don't have everything that I want. Yada, 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 yada. And it got a lot of traction and I find that a lot of people relate to this tweet. And it's a thought pattern that thinks that you have to have everything sorted out by 25. Like why is 25 such the hallmark of success. I kind of want to delve into where this lie kind of came from, this kind of standard came from. One of the reasons is, is because when we were younger, we had so many fantasies of when I grow up, I want to be this, I want to do this. And at a young age, tell the truth, 25 sounded like a grown ass adult. You were like, Even being young, I thought that 40 years old was like being 60 or 70. Like when you're young, ages seem so much bigger. Even when you're a child, 21 seems like, oh my God, amazing. But then the funny thing happens, you actually get to 25 years old, you get to 21 and you still feel like an immature little kid. You don't realize how immature you are when you get to that age. And when I think about my own mum, my mum had her first child when she was 21. I cannot possibly imagine having a child at 21. When I look back at me being 21 and how dumb I was, I did not know what I know now. And I feel like, let's say, I was have a child at 21. God knows what that child would have turned out to be. God knows what kind of mother I would be. God knows where I would have been in my career. Do you know what I mean? And like, I think, imagine I got married at 25. I probably would have been divorced by 27, 28. <laughs> 
probably would have made that man an idol. I probably would have expected him to be my be all and end all. I would have depended on him to give me my sense of self, my self esteem, to make me happy, to love myself to give me a sense of identity. And truth be told, if we are very, very, very real with ourselves, most of us want a husband because we desire the validation that comes with being a wife. But we don't actually really want the responsibility. But y'all not ready to have that conversation. And we've got, really got to be real with ourselves. If it hasn't happened for us now, no matter what age you are, 21, 25, 28, 30, 35, 40, however old you are. This is not a age specific video. Whatever age you are, we have to understand that if it hasn't happened, it's not the right time. I thought I had been ready to be married. I thought I had been ready to have kids. And it's because I desired it so much. But when I actually realized that I was in love with the idea more than I was in love with the responsibility that came with it, I sobered up and thought, to myself I can definitely wait <laughs> and don't get me wrong there are people that got married at 25 younger than 25 and managed to make the relationship work and kudos to you guys there are success stories like that however we don't know the amount of pain struggle ups and downs heartache learning growth that they had to do getting married at such a young age so this is not a getting married at a young age is a bad thing but i want to talk to those who did not get their fairy tale did not get what they expected or what they thought they would have at the age they are at now and i guess i'll start off with the hammer first and then i'll get the plaster on top <laughs> <laughs> but this is the hammer that I want to hit you guys with. Many of us, myself included, have to sober up when it comes to life and stop expecting Disney perfection. It doesn't exist. Your life is not a Disney movie or a fiction novel. You are a real person with real feelings, real emotions, real ups and real downs. Nothing is perfect and even our idea of perfection is being influenced by outside voices, whether that's the media, your parents, your culture, whatever it is, all influencing your idea of perfection. But it is high time that we sober up and we become realistic about our expectations and our timelines and understand and really deep and appreciate that God's timing for your life specifically is perfect. God's plan for your life is perfect. And a sobering scripture that really encourages me is 2 Peter 3 verse 8. And it says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow to keep his promises as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And that encourages me because if a thousand years is like a day to God, what is our life? Like God lives outside of time. He's not constricted by time. We're constricted to time because we're like, okay, it's October now. And then it's going to be November. Then it's going to be December. And it's going to be a new year. And we feel like, like life is like evading us. But God is outside of time. And so if he wants to give it to you now or then, it's going to be perfect for you. And so I want to speak about why do we do it? Like, why do we have these unrealistic expectations? And the first thing that I want to talk about is comparison. We judge ourselves based on others around us. Back in the day, the only people that we could really judge ourselves against was people we went to school with, our neighbours, the people in our small communities, our siblings, our cousins, etc. However, now with social media and the access that it gives us into other people's lives, we now have more people to compare ourselves to. Understand that. You only need to open up your Twitter to see yet another proposal. You only need to open up your Instagram 
to see another wedding, another pregnancy announcement, another gender reveal. And may I let you into a secret that you probably already know, but I don't think anyone's really taken to heart. The more that you click on those cute babies or those couple goals or your favorite celebrity couple is the more that Instagram is going to show you that and it's because they think that you like it they know that if they present this image to you you're going to click on it and they're going to keep on feeding more to you and the more they feed more to you the more you click it and the cycle continues and now this becomes your worldview oh my god everyone's getting married oh my god everyone's getting pregnant oh my god everyone's having a baby oh my god But the truth is, no they are not, they're not, not everyone, but because you have curated this skewed view of reality and you are allowing the algorithms to mess with your mental health, to mess with your perception and to play on your discontentment. And we have to understand this, as many people that are getting married are getting divorced, as many people that are having babies, there are people that are also having miscarriages, as many people people who are buying new homes, there are people who are getting foreclosed on, there are people that are getting evicted, people that are bankrupt in debt. And that's not to be a party pooper. I find that a lot of people feel like everything has to be positive. Oh no, you can't say that. Why are you thinking about the negative? It's not thinking about the negative, it's actually having a balanced view of life, having a realistic view of life. And I find that a lot of people are so caught up because when they go on social media, it's a form of escape it's not real it's not realistic the figures are not figuring it's not adding up all you're seeing is positive images all you're seeing is highlights all you're seeing is fun all you're seeing is luxury and materialism because you curated your feed by the things that you're clicking on so I could be having a total different experience than Susie down the road that likes to look at flowers or gardening or interior design you curate your feed and I say it and I've said it before and I will say it again nobody is posting their failures it doesn't sell guys <laughs> unless it's on youtube <laughs> nobody is posting pictures of them crying okay you're only getting a slice of the story and there you are feeling bad about yourself feeling bad about your life because every time you go on social media there's a new success story or there's a new announcement from different people but it feels like it's everybody but me. So how do we beat these feelings of discontentment outside of curating your feed so it's more of a positive experience? We need to judge ourselves based on where we've been and where we are now. The other day I was telling my friend and I don't usually tell stories like this. I don't usually think about where I'm coming from. I usually just like so focus on like where I'm going like most of you guys are. I was telling my friend the other day I said to her, I remember there was a time that I used to sleep on the sofa in my mum's house because I didn't have a room. I didn't have a bedroom for a few years. I used to sleep on the couch and every time visitors came around, I would have to fold up my blanket and put it to the side. I felt horrible. I felt homeless. Even though I had a home, I felt homeless. I don't know what you guys' experience is, but that to me did not feel right in my soul. At the same time, even though the walls I felt that like were closing in on me, I knew that this wasn't gonna be my forever. This wasn't gonna last always. And so I was hustling, I was still working. I was pop I was like popping on social media and going to I'm going to bed on my couch every night. Like, it's crazy. But fast forward another seven, eight years, or however long it's been, I now have a free bedroom apartment. I can choose whatever room I want to sleep in. Even if I want to sleep on the couch, it's my own place. I have all the space I could have ever asked for. Sometimes I literally like run through my hallway or run through my kitchen or just swing my arms in the air because there's so much space and I always desired space when I was crammed at my mum's house. 
four people in a three bedroom house. And I look back and I have to be grateful. I may not have the marriage yet. I may not have the kids yet. But for that one thing, I can say, God, I thank you. I'm grateful for my journey. I'm grateful for my story. I'm grateful for the times I imagined to be in this position financially that I am in now. You guys see the end product, but you don't recognize the story. And I know it's cliche. Everybody says it, but you don't understand what it's like to be in a place where you feel stuck, where you feel like you can't see your way out. And I know many of you may be in that position now. I want to let you guys know it gets better. It takes time. I'm not going to lie to you, but it gets better. So I want to say some of us just need to start becoming more grateful for the things that we have. Most of the people watching this video, you're part of this, the 1% of the world. You're part of the 1% of the world that has food on the table. You have a house to live in, not a hut, a house to live in. You have, even some of us got air conditioning, you've got heating. Like you really have to count your blessings and be grateful. I know social media makes you feel like you're competing with everyone and like, you have to understand that everybody's competing with someone. But it's always gonna be someone that has more than you have. There's always gonna be someone that has what you want. When do you rest? When do you be content? When do you be grateful for what you have? When do you be grateful for the portion, your portion in life? So look back on where you're coming from. Look back on your past. And even if you're not physically where you want to be still, look at the changes that have happened in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions. Check back where you were at mentally four, five years ago. Even last year, how broken and worthless you used to feel. And even if you're still on that journey, Look how much more confident you are, more self-assured you are now. Gratitude, be grateful. And this is something that I know I need to do. Vocally be grateful, vocally count my blessings. But it's very difficult to be grateful when you're always looking at what you don't have or what you want. Life is a journey, not a destination. It's not a set of things that you need to check off your checklist. It's not a list of things that you've got to get done. It's a journey. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And contrary to popular belief, all of the fun is in the journey and not the destination. Not when you actually arrive. You can look back and see, for those of you who feel like you're successful in one area, you can look back and see, like, I was so much more creative. I was so much more of a go-getter. I was so passionate. I was so... Duh, 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 duh. And now you have the thing. There's a tendency to become comfortable, to become complacent. The fun is in a journey. It doesn't feel like it, it doesn't feel like fun, but trust me, the fun is in a journey. Because as soon as you do arrive, you will be looking for the next thing, the next place to go, the next thing to do, the next project to start, the next thing to work on. We need to find joy and peace and contentment in where we are right now. And no shade, but you guys kill me with the Godwin tweets the God went underneath someone else's accomplishment. It was fun for about a week, but I get secondhand embarrassment every time I see the God when. It's like, it's too much. It's too much. And it might sound seem funny, but why can't you just congratulate someone without making it about you? And let's be honest, some of you guys can't wait to post the I said yes Instagram post. Some of you guys can't wait to have the keys dangling for my first house. And that's all some of us fantasize about. The image, the image, how it's gonna make me look, how it's gonna set me apart from my peers, how I'm gonna look on the timeline. And to be honest, all you're gonna get is a congratulations and people are gonna move on with their lives because everybody's focused on themselves. The satisfaction you're trying to get out of these accomplishments, you're not actually gonna get. Even that is an illusion. So sometimes we really have to be honest about our motivations for why we want the things that we want. Is it so that you can prove so and so wrong? Is it to flex on your haters? The concept of haters to me, like I don't, I could not give my, I could not give haters energy by calling them haters, by even giving names to them. To me, in my mind, everyone loves me. <laughs> That's how I get on with life. Everybody loves me. But is it to flex on your haters? Is it to be a part of the in the crowd? Those that are doing bits. Is it to look like you made it in life? Is it to get back at your ex in some crazy conniving way? And as much as these may appear as good motivations, when you get there, you won't believe how miserable and empty you feel because your intentions were not pure. And here's another thing that I've been thinking about for a few years. We need to judge ourselves based on our family and not the world at large. 
For many people, you were the first person in your family to graduate university, to have a degree. That is huge. That almost makes you a celebrity in the family. People are looking up to you like, damn. The oldest looking down to you like, wow, congratulations. How well are you doing compared to what your family were able to achieve? Wow, you have the privilege of getting an education, landing a job that pays you well enough to have food in your stomach, a roof over your head, an internet connection, which allows you to actually do whatever the hell you want, to create whatever business that you want, that puts you directly to your customers. You have enough money to pay rent, to pay for your car, and still have some money left over to enjoy life's little luxuries. Could your grandparents say the same? Could your mum say the same? Could your parents say the same? Could your cousins even say the same? We really don't understand how very blessed we are because we stay comparing ourselves to Kylie Jenner or Beyonce and other strangers we see on the internet. And it's really okay to aspire to be the Kylie Jenner's, the Beyonce's of the world, to even be that woman that has the things that you want. It's okay to aspire to that. But it's way more important that you like yourself. You like the person that you're becoming. Even though I'm not where I want to be, I like who I'm becoming. That to me is more fun than already having it, already making it. That to me makes me happier, that I like who I'm becoming, that I can look back on where I was and see where I am now. I understand that I've got further to go, but I'm actually happy. I like who I'm becoming. And it is more important that God can trust you with what you've already been given. And Luke 16, 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Some of you want to be famous so bad. Some of you want to be well-known so bad. Some of you want to be like those girls on Instagram so bad. But the truth is, you would not be able to handle fame without getting lost in the source, without becoming a drug addict, without losing your soul. Which is why God will never bless you with something that will potentially destroy you. He loves you way too much to give you something prematurely. That's why it's always a process. A bad parent is someone who gives much to someone that is immature. That's a bad parent. Would you buy a baby a Mercedes Benz? Even if you could give that to your child, would you buy a baby a Mercedes Benz and put it in the car? No. Would you hand over your company to a teenage boy? No, you wouldn't. Would you give your little sister or your little brother a lump sum of money and expect that child to take care of your money? You wouldn't do it. Why? Because that would be irresponsible on your part and too much for them to handle on their part. And one of my favorite scriptures is Ecclesiastes 3.11. And it says, God makes everything beautiful in its time. So trust the timing of your life. I know all of your plans have not manifested. I know life hasn't gone to plan yet. I say yet. But trust the timing of your life. Trust the chapter you are currently in. And it may be time for you to redefine what success means to you. I'm successful because I woke up this morning. I'm successful because I've got air in my lungs. I'm successful because I treat people how I would want to be treated. I'm successful because I'm able to provide, give money to those I love. That's what makes me successful. Maybe you need to redefine what that is. And so when it comes to age, like age is nothing but a number. But you need to appreciate the age that you are at now because you'll never ever get it back. I'll never ever be 30 again. And I've never used my age to measure where I should or should not be in life because I make every year count. I want to be able to look back on every age and say, this is what I was able to achieve in this year. Even if it's only one thing, I can say that year was worth it. I can now progress on to 31, to 32, whatever. And that one achievement or whatever it is, I can say that is enough. I'm happy with that. And I can successfully close that chapter. And I don't have to feel shame when 31 comes round. I can gladly bid 30 goodbye because I have successfully completed that chapter. <laughs> Even if it's not everything I wanted to do, I've still got another year by God's grace. And a lot of you fear and dread aging or hitting 21, 
25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Some of you guys dread hitting those milestones because you don't feel like you've achieved anything. You don't feel like you've achieved enough. It's like life is running past you and it scares you, which is why it is high time, ladies and gentlemen, that you get a grip on your life that you start living life and not allowing life to live you. Get a plan, get a focus and work hard. The world owes you nothing. God owes you nothing. And a lot of people's entitlement is the reason why they'll never get what they want because you feel entitled to it. Get a plan, get a focus and work hard like everybody else. And some of you need to delete social media. Throw it in the bin, go on a fast. Find out who you are without all the outside influences, without all the outside noise, and without all the outside comparisons, without all this noise telling you who you should be, where you should be at, what you should be doing. Do not let social media run your life. Control the thing that you can control, and that is you. That is you. And I have to say this, but many of you are feeling a calling. God's pulling you back. God is calling you back to him, calling you to fast and pray and seek his face again because you're too caught up in this world and it is robbing you of your joy and your peace and you're getting angry at him because you're using the world's metrics to measure what you should be, where you should be at, what you should have now and you're using these things to measure your own life. And some of you think that God is there to serve you, that he's your servant, that he's your genie in a bottle, that you've just got to rub the right way. And that's wrong. You need to submit to him. He does not submit to you. He's too big for that. And so here's the plaster for you guys. That was the hammer. Here is the plaster for you guys. A lot of us live under so much pressure. We are so hard on ourselves. We beat ourselves up internally. We beat ourselves up because our dream or our fantasy of where we want to be has not manifested. So you push and you push and you push and you beat yourself up and you beat yourself up until you stop and realize the reason why maybe this thing is not working for me is because all along all the while along, I've been climbing, it's been hard, it's been difficult. All along, I realized that my ladder has been up against the wrong wall. Could it be that you may need to change course if the way that you're going isn't working for you? Honestly, when it's right, it's light. As much as we say we work hard, we actually work smart. We work, we're working on what is working. If you're finding yourself working on something that's not working, maybe it's time to change course. And when you find that thing, it's gonna feel natural. It's gonna feel organic. Do you still have to work hard? Yes, but it's gonna feel organic and it's going to yield results. So maybe, just maybe, your definition of success, your expectations, maybe they were a little bit wrong. And that doesn't mean that you failed. It just might mean that you need to recalibrate. And I always encourage people to be easy on themselves because I know very well what it's like to be so hard on myself and just put incredible amounts of stress and pressure on myself to be, do and have the things that I desire, to be better than I was and to not be a failure in life. But I have to understand and you have to understand no matter how much I beat myself up, it's not going to get me what I want any faster. But I will get to where I want to be with bruises and pain and hurt that usually when you finish beating yourself up and you're standing there, you're going to have to go and get therapy for the pain that you've caused. You may have the house, the family, but you need therapy because of how hard you are on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Take off the boxing gloves and be easy. You don't want to reach your destination battered and bruised. I want to reach my destination or my goal with a smile on my face and gratitude in my heart and pat myself on the back and say, well done, sis. Where to next? And I want to end this video with a little bit more encouragement and as much as I don't look up to celebrities, I don't idolise celebrities' relationship, I don't idolise anybody because I don't know their story. And even if I knew their story, their story isn't mine. But just to kind of encourage you guys because some of us may have one thing but we don't have the other. 
and that's usually how life works and it's fine if you were able to get what you have now it shows that you can also have the other things that you desire just maybe not all at the same time so if you have the amazing career maybe this is not a season for you to have the man or the kids too if you have the marriage maybe it's not a season for you to have the kids too if you have the marriage and the kids maybe it's not a season to have the career yet but it will come in due season so i want to end this video talking about some of the people who using the topic of marriage got married plus 25 plus 30 okay so sierra got married at 31 cameron diaz got married at 42 eva mendez got married at 37 julia roberts got married at 35 cindy crawford got married at 32 kelly Rowland got married at 33 Jeannie May got married at 41. Viola Davis got married at 37. And Salma Hayek got married at 42 to a billionaire. God, when? <laughs> but I just want you guys to know that everyone's journey is different. Every story is different and one is not better than the other. If you got married younger, congratulations. If you're still yet to get married, a future congratulations to you. And sis, I want to congratulate you on your engagement, because it's all coming. I'm congratulating you in advance. I wanna congratulate you on your engagement. I wanna congratulate you on your marriage. I wanna congratulate you on your first child. I wanna congratulate you on your first house. I wanna congratulate you on your first business. I wanna congratulate you that you were able to buy your dream car. I wanna congratulate you on the fact that you was able to retire your mum. I wanna congratulate you on all the success that is yet to come visualize it it's there it's it's there it's just along the journey and you haven't arrived there yet and it's okay so thank you guys for watching this video make sure you guys leave a like i find that i've been doing a lot of relationship videos and i really want to get back to what i started this channel on and that is helping you women to level up mentally to emotionally level up self-development is at my heart it's what i've done for years and it's what i want to help you guys to do so if you love this content hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and don't let the internet rush you okay Bye, guys.